JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week October the 5th until October the 9th. I am Haralabos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as, as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have only one central bank deciding on monetary policy this week, and this is the RBA. Uh, following the obvious remarks by Deputy Governor uh, the Bell, it would be interesting to see whether this bank, bank will decide uh, to ease its policy further at this meeting. We also get the minutes from the latest FOMC and ECB meetings, from which we may get hints with regards to those banks' uh, future policy plans. And finally, on Friday, we, uh, Canadian Employment Report for September is also due to be released. But let's take things from the beginning. Today, the calendar appears relatively light. We get the final services and composite PMIs for September, for, from, for September from the Eurozone, the UK, and the US. But as it is the case most of the times, expectations are for the final prints to confirm the preliminary estimates. So I don't believe that uh, there will be any market um, any major market moves on these releases. From the US, we also get uh, the ISM non-manufacturing PMI for the month, which is forecast to have declined somewhat to 56.3 from 56.9. From now on Tuesday, during the Asian, uh, during the Asian morning, the RPA announces, announces its uh, monetary policy decision. At its previous meeting, this bank decided to maintain the targets of the cash rate and the yield of the three-year government bonds at 0.25%, uh, but also increased the size of its term funding facility in, uh, in order to make it easier for banks to access more funds for longer. Officials reiterated that the downturn due to the coronavirus is not as severe as earlier expected, but underlined that the recovery is likely to be both uneven and bumpy, adding that they remain willing to expand their stimulative efforts if deemed necessary. Now, since then, the only top-tier economic release we got was the nation's employment report for August. The employment rate declined to 6 to 6.8% from 7.5%, while the net change in employment revealed that the economy has added 111,000 jobs instead of losing 50,000 as the forecast suggested. So combined with the fact that the RBA has eased its policy at uh, the prior meeting, uh, this uh, decent employment report Seen in, uh, seen in isolation, uh, let's be careful, suggests that officials may refrain from acting again at this uh, meeting. However, a couple of weeks ago, RBA Deputy Governor Guy Debel flagged the prospect of more easing with options including uh, currency market intervention and negative interest rates. Uh, due to that, according to the ASX 30 interbank cash rates futures implied uh, yield curve, there is a 54% chance for interest rates to be cut to zero at this meeting. So something like that may prove negative uh, for the OZ. Uh, rate cut may prove negative for the OZ, but given that more than 50% of the action is already priced in, we would expect the slide to stay limited. For the OZ to tumble aggressively, the bank may have to cut rates and signal that more decreases are on the way maybe in the negative territory. Now, in case officials refrain from pushing the cut button, the Aussie may experience a relief bounce. The focus will then turn 20, sig 20 signals with regards to any cut at one of the upcoming meetings. If there are no clear hints with regards to that, the currency is likely to continue strengthening, strengthening for a while more. Overall, though, we believe that the currency's broader path is likely to stay independent, dependent on developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. Remember that recently, it's not the RBA that is moving uh, the Aussie, 
is development, is development surrounding the broader market sentiment. When equities and other risk-linked assets uh, gain, the Aussie gains as well, while the opposite is true during the risk of periods when equities are, co uh, are coming under uh, selling interest and safe havens are gaining. Now, as for Tuesday's economic indicators, during the Asian morning, apart from the RBA decision, we also get Australia's trade balance for August, with the nation's surplus expected to have increased to 5.154 billion Aussies from 400 and from 4.607 uh, billions. Now, during the European session, the UK construction PMI for September is coming out and the forecast points to a small decrease to 54.1 from 54.6. Later in the day, we get the US and Canadian trade balances for August. Both, uh, of the, both uh, the US and Canadian deficits are expected to have uh, widened somewhat. Now, on Wednesday, the main item on the agenda may be uh, the minutes from the latest FOMC gathering. At that meeting, the committee kept its policy unchanged, but changed its inflation language, noting that they will aim to achieve inflation moderately above 2% for some time, so that inflation averages 2% over time. Now, with regards to the new economic projections, officials revised up their GDP and inflation forecasts and downgraded the unemployment rate ones, while the new dot plot suggested that interest rates are likely to stay at present levels at least through 2023. That said, looking at the details, we see that one member was in favor of a hike in 2022 and four members saw rates higher in 2023. Combined with the inflation forecast of 2023, which is at 2%, this shows that some members may not be willing to tolerate inflation above target for long, as pointed in the decision statement. Thus, we will dig into the minutes to see whether this is the case or not. If the minutes reveal that there are several members against uh, tolerating inflation above 2% for some time, equities and risk-linked assets are likely to come under selling interest, while safe havens are likely to gain. The opposite may be true in case the minutes reveal that the decision was unanimous, something we see as the least likely scenario based on the dot plot. Why is that? Uh, when monetary policy is expected to stay loose for longer, uh, this means uh, cheaper loans for companies and uh, thereby more profits, and that's why uh, equities um, are uh, usually gain uh, when monetary policy is, uh, is loose. Now, as for Wednesday's data, the only release worth mentioning is Canada's IV PMI for September, but no forecast is currently available. Now, on Thursday, we get uh, more minutes, this time from the ECB. At, its, uh, at, at the prior ECB meeting, policymakers um, kept policy untouched, reiterating that they stand ready to adjust all their instruments as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves towards its aim in a sustained manner. So bearing in mind that the preliminary PMIs uh, and the CPIs for September disappointed with all the services PMI coming uh, back into the contractionary territory and we saw uh, CPI, the headline CPI falling further into the negative territory. So bearing all this in mind, we will scan the minutes uh, for clues as to how willing officials, ECB officials are to ease their policy further in the months to come and when, if so, when such an action may take place. Um, with regards to the economic indicators, uh, during the Asian session, we have China's Kaijin Services PMI for September, for which no forecast is currently available, while during the EU trading, Germany's trade balance for August is uh, due to be released. Expectations are for uh, the nation's surplus to have increased uh, slightly. Finally, on Friday, during these, the Asian session, Japan's final GDP for the second quarter is coming out, but no forecast is available. The second, the second estimate was at minus 7.9% uh, uh, quarter over quarter, and thus we see the case for the final print to be close to that number. The nation's uh, household spending for August is also coming out, and, and it is expected to have rebounded 3.2% month over month after sliding 6.5% in July. During the early European session, UK's monthly GDP for August is coming out alongside the industrial and manufacturing production rates and the trade balance uh, for the same month. 
No forecast is available for the GDP, while the industrial and manufacturing production year-over-year -year rates are forecast to have increased to minus 4.6 and 5.9% from, um, from, from minus 7.8 and minus 9.4%. The nation's trade deficit is expected to have widened somewhat. Now, having said uh, all that, uh, though, we expect the British pound to react little on these releases. We believe that the currency will stay mostly linked to politics and especially developments surrounding the, the Brexit landscape. Remember that last Thursday, the pound tumbled following headlines that the EU and the UK failed to close their uh, differences gap in the latest round of trade talks and that uh, the EU began legal proceedings over the UK's plan to override key elements of the withdrawal agreement. However, the pound rebounded on Friday after uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel said that she remains optimistic that the deal um, is still possible before year end. What's uh, more, EU Chief uh, Brexit Negotiator uh, Michel Barnier suggested that talks could continue up until the end of the month, even though the two sides have set a mid-October deadline for reaching common ground. So this is encouraging. Uh, everyone was expecting uh, everyone had in mind the 15th of October deadline and with no progress being made, there was nervousness in the market and the pound slid. Now with headlines suggesting that the talks could continue even after the, uh, the October EU summit, uh, this is something positive and increases the chances for, um, for the two sides to find common ground. So the pound, uh, pound traders are likely to focus more on whether there will be more talks indeed and whether we will see some progress in the next uh, few weeks. Now, from Canada, we have uh, the employment report for September. The unemployment rate is forecast to have declined to 9.8% from 10.2%, while the net change in employment is expected to show that the economy added 153.3 thousand jobs, less than August's uh, 245.8 thousand, but still uh, much more than the pre-COVID uh, monthly numbers. Um, at its prior gathering, the Bank of Canada kept interest rates unchanged at 0.25%, repeating that they will stay there until the 2% inflation target is sustainably achieved. They also reiterated uh, the view that they will continue with their uh, quantitative easing program until the economic recovery is well underway and that they stand ready to adjust their programs if market conditions change. They said that uh, both the global and Canadian economies are evolving broadly in, in line with, uh, the, with the scenario outlined in July, but added that the bounce back in activity in the third quarter looks to be faster than anticipated in July. So with all that in mind, we had an optimistic, uh, relatively optimistic statement last time, and also taking into account that the current common CPIs for August accelerated somewhat, and this employment report this time may allow Bank of Canada policymakers to continue sitting comfortably on the sidelines for a while more. In my opinion, this could uh, prove somewhat positive uh, for the Canadian dollar, but its broader direction may depend on uh, on um, on how uh, oil prices will perform. Okay, when oil due to the fact that, the, that Canada is a major a major oil exporting nation, when prices uh, gain, the Canadian dollar tends to gain as well, and uh, vice versa. So that's it uh, from me. Uh, I will leave you a few seconds uh, uh, to ask any questions, if there are any questions with regards to these events. So we don't have any questions. Thank you very much. That's it for, from me. Thank you for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next uh, Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.